Your music exclusive. I, I, I grew up like a savage. One, two, one, two. You now rocking with the No Vultures podcast. You got me, myself, Laura Rap. You got OG Klee going away on a vacation. Free OG Klee. In fact, OG Klee will be back in a couple of months. You did it without him. I did it without him. You got to keep it lit. <laughs> and today, we got a very, 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 very special guest. Now, we could have been anywhere in the world huh. doing this interview, huh. but I refuse to have this done anywhere else but the pergola. Yeah. Because I believe in legendary shit. I believe in legends. I believe in changing the game, right? And it wouldn't be right if we didn't come to the pergola. Y'all have man. y'all have seen this man all over the world. You have seen him in negotiations and deals. He have explained it to you. He give you free game on Fridays. He lets you live within your means to be his fan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Today we have the right. legendary great La Russell on No Come Vultures. On. Come on, man. man. Honored. That was an incredible introduction. Man, thank you, brother. I mean, um, I just got to thank you off top. You know, usually I give a no vultures disclaimer about we don't want to interview people when it's controversial. We want to do it because it's impactful, right? right? We want to do it because it's a wave. It's something people can grow and learn from, right? And that anybody that's following you or if they follow you after this, it's, it's no explanation needed yeah. as far as what you got going on with that. On, that's man. what good company is built on, right? <laughs> so, again, you know, normally the disclaimer would be that but today you are the definition of what this game means to me and many others so man thank you for that honor, honor. man um i gotta start from the beginning because that's where i go right so born and raised in vallejo i'm born in oakland raised born in, in vallejo yeah hey you know i find that to be a common right pattern ain't that, right ain't that so <laughs> you know you <laughs> shout out to my cousin Sean. Shout out to Vallejo Ken. Shout out to many others who followed that path because of. Let me ask you. I don't want to assume of parents attempting to get to do better. Exactly the Great Migration. Right. <laughs> 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 and so, how how early did you uh, leave? Uh, like five. Five. Yep. And did you land in College Park? Yep, I've been here since. Ever since. Ever since. And you know um. I know some people from College Park. Shout out to OGTY, uh, Ironic, and, and yep. those guys. <laughs> and um, something about this neighborhood, right? Right. Um, would you consider it middle class growing up? Um, hey, it's funny because perception, I think, does a lot. So growing up, I did think okay. it was like middle class. Um just because I was oblivious, it was my norm. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not middle class. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> you feel right, me? Right. Like it's funny. One day, my mom was like, "Cause my mom used to be like, uh, you know, they used to say we're not from the hood because we came from Oakland." So okay. she like, "I mean, we don't stay there. We're not from the hood, right?" Right. right. And she said one day she thinking she like, "Nigga, all you hear is sirens <laughs> and niggas doing donuts <laughs> and gunshots. Nigga, you are in the hood. You just conditioned. You right. got accustomed to the sounds of it and mm -hmm. what it looks like. So definitely, growing up, I did, I, I did think that you right. feel me because." But not even because the neighborhood. I just thought that because my pops was having it, so mm. I didn't. I didn't have to. Um, my experience was different. Okay, we was like the niggas in the hood who had money, had so money. I still yeah. had the things I wanted, right? right. So the experience right. was a bit different. Um, but it's definitely not middle class, it's definitely nigga. Not middle class. All the money pops <laughs> made, bro. We could have definitely right. been in middle class. So, so for the people that became fans of the rapper, right? They don't the the pergola was the pergola before the pergola, right? Because you got if you the one that's having it, that mean you got the video games. Everybody want to spend a night. You know what I'm saying? See, but the pergola was the pergola, but wasn't the pergola. But yeah, it right. was. You feel right. me? Because everybody was always at the crib, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and you know, um, I find that interesting too because the, one of the first things you mentioned is pops, right? And in our in our 
I guess we we're taught by society in the way they look at us is that that's not normal, but it mm. actually is normal. There's more fathers around, and it's not. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's it's, it's equal. It's right. Equal. It's, it's equal. not a. It's, so it's not always a cop out. Like, cause I'm sure some guys tell you all the time, man. If it wasn't for your pops, like you know what I mean? You right. you run into those stories just because you have a father present. So that's interesting too. You right. know what I'm saying? Having that dynamic. Um, so what was it like? When you hit this neighborhood, I mean, you just hit the ground running. You going to elementary school. You having friends that's around here. Was it sports? Um, everything. Mm -hmm. We were just outside. Okay. Like, actively outside. I grew up in a block where everybody was outside, all the kids. Uh, like I say, my pops was always like that nigga, and mm -hmm. my family was just hella cool. So we always had... It was just in all the neighbors fuck with right. us. Niggas was always at the house. We cooking. Right. Nigga, we hey, it's really like the most ghetto fabulous shit. Nigga, <laughs> I remember one time it was a I think it was a Mike Tyson fight. Them niggas had the fucking living room TV in the front yard oh, yeah, on yeah. crates, yeah. nigga. You feel me? But that was like my upbringing. Like I come from it. Like right, the right. Uncles was in the garage, niggas was fighting dogs. Like, right, I, I really right, come from it. Right, it was just right. an immersive experience, and it's beautiful as fuck. It's mm -hmm. black history. It's, man, <laughs> man. Like, a nigga really came up in it. Man, <laughs> it's because, you know, part of the reason why, you know, we started a podcast is not only to, like, you know, because you see people once they become what we say famous, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you tend to not think that they regular niggas, and I heard right. you say that before. And so we tend we, we try to humanize us, right? So when you say even whatever part of the game they was in, however they was hustling, look what it turned into with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I'm a hustler. This is the same right. thing, but this is the modern version. Exactly. It's just revolutionized, mm -hmm. right? And that's always the goal. Like, every father should want their child to supersede whatever they did, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you lay a blueprint, you should want a nigga to compound it and, all right, Absolutely. now go get double. If I had two houses, you should go get ten. Absolutely. You feel me type shit. So, definitely, mm -hmm. it's just a revolutionized hustle. I'm still the same hustler. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> That's, I, I love that though. So, and you know, another thing I, I noticed from Vallejo in this particular neighborhood is that it's and for for the people around the world, y'all hear Vallejo because it's like geniuses come from here. Like come you know, on, a city that was bankrupt. I just uh, had the opportunity to talk to her on Sway Show, right? And I co-hosted that day, so I was just explaining right, to the world that you know the city went bankrupt. Like it's, right. it's not like it's not it's it's hard, you know what I'm saying? So when you see these people come out of here and they so polished and they so talented and they so vibrant, know that they came from some shit. Yeah, and and understanding that this is a city with, with absolutely no infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Like, if you grow up in Vallejo, you not going to succeed if you have to get a job in Vallejo. Right. It ain't shit here. Right. There's no there's no industry. So if you want to be a star, you don't look you got to look beyond your city, which could do a lot of damage mentally. It makes you feel like the guy gonna make it the fuck out of here. Right. Like there's no opportunity. So right. like the niggas who make it out of here is like, bro, you really had to put some work in. It's not like certain places where you could be uh a nigga could be walking past you going to their job. And, right. And it's right. like, oh nigga, you tell that's not how that is out right, here. Right. Ain't nobody looking this way. Man, that is that's that's crazy. And I you know, coincidentally enough, your neighborhood, all the blocks is named after colleges. Huh. <laughs> ah, wow. I never Wow. Nigga, that's why it's college park. <laughs> Stop playing. <laughs> we on Hastings and stuff. <laughs> hey. <laughs> he went to get bombs. <laughs> College Park, man. Nigga, what? <laughs> hey, nigga just gave me my own block history. I'm for show sure niggas don't know. Nigga, as you said it, I started thinking of all the streets. I'm like, damn, Loyola. Harvard, Stanford, I said, oh, nigga. <laughs> Boy, if that ain't white strategy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's different. That is. I love it. That is. Wow. Hey, Put um, me on in. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And um, so growing up in, in, you know, everybody, you know, pretty much in our community has, like, similar stories. You know what I mean? As far right. as, you know, 
our parents, our cousins, and, you know, people dabbling in what, you know, the same stories of the average African-American, right? Um, but getting out on your own and, like, I'm going to say around the time we hit puberty, right? Right. In, in junior high, and um, what was the vibration, vibration like when you could understand it? Like, when you, the music that influenced you, the people that influenced you, like, what did you see? Um... I feel like I I had like a a, a slight vast understanding kind of early, um, like I could see. I could see what shit was kind of early, but I was still um, in the phase of wanting to be accepted. So mm -hmm. I used to act a lot more blind than I was. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, I used to do shit that I could see the outcome in just because I, I wanted to be more blind than I was to kind of blend. But I was also still um, very much so myself in every endeavor. So okay. it was, I just I had a very interesting experience growing up here because uh, I was immersed in everything, but I was also very um, I could see. OK, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how really to explain it. So no, I know um, what you mean. Even back then, um, I knew I had. Hey, nigga, bro, <laughs> you realize <laughs> College Park, all the streets is named after colleges. Harvard, Stanford, Loyola. Nigga, did you ever notice that? <laughs> Hell no, because we ain't go to college. This nigga just said that. I went to college. Oh, you did go to college. <laughs> IZDC. <laughs> 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 hey, but nigga, I said, oh, shit. Right. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. No. Nope. All colleges. <laughs> All colleges. Yeah. I'm going to pretend like I said that. Shit. <laughs> no, for real. I'm going to be like, I was destined for college. You know, yeah, for sure. I come from College Park for where sure. all I ever seen was the names of colleges. Right, 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 <laughs> right. <laughs> really. But yeah, no, nah, growing up was a, uh, man, it was a, it was an interesting experience for me. Because like I said, I, I had a uh, high vision early, but I used to really, um, I used to just minimize that at times to kind of fit in yeah. blend. Yeah. And I did have a different experience because a lot of my homies um didn't have fathers. Like like that I kind of grew up with. That actually, but it was a it was a 50-50. Okay. It's interesting because on this block in particular, my homies, like a good portion of them had dads, but once I got out and went to school, like all of my best friends from school is like they didn't, they right? Didn't. So it was it's it's such a different experience. You you get to see people just cultivate differently differently man so and and being that i did have my pops i got to see i just had a different perspective on a mm -hmm. little bit of everything mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure i know I, I know i know what you mean um now by this time are you mo bars yet Wow! <laughs> How this nigga know that nor do I. hey right <laughs> I, I, I think I was more bars from like seventh grade. Okay. Until probably about early ninth. Okay. Yep. And ninth, you went to Bethel. Yep. You I went, went to, to Jesse Bethel. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Nard War. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I know a few people. I you love know it. that 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 and I like to do my due diligence too, man. I like to cause right. I don't I like to be interested in the actual subject, not the hype. Like I wanna know this person. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, oh, I don't know if people know this, but so you went there. Did you go there with Yee? Little Yee? I did, yeah. And um, CJ. CJ. We, 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 had a, we had a few yeah. come, come, out of, come out of our lock in Bethel. Yeah, we had come a few. Out, yeah. Larry June went there. Her went there Her as well. Her went there. Yeah, um, Larry June yeah, went there. Some of the yeah. SOB cats. Yeah. Legendary high school. Yeah. Let's give Bethel their motherfucking credit, come man. On, they create man. legends. Jesse you know Bethel what I'm alumni, <laughs> man. We did our thing. <laughs> did your thing. Hey, hey, you know, um, I think that uh, you know, like when I hear stories of if you go back in the day, is Kid and Play and Martin all and Salt and Pepper working at Mervin's together, going to the same school. Like to me, that's genius. Like 
people should know that and be able to make the connection. Like, man, it, it was something going on at the time. It's the water. It's the water. It's the water. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's 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 lovely though. And then um, but you didn't last at Bethel. No. You ended up at People's. Yeah. And for and for those that don't know, <laughs> what, what what is People's and how did you end up hey, there? Hey, man, People's is for the people, man. Shout out to <laughs> continuation schools that help niggas get through it. Hey, you Straight know, up. honestly, what People's taught me, though, was like, Damn, nigga, I should have came here sooner. I would have been done with school and got straight to my craft. I wouldn't mm. even spent four years. Mm. But then four years gave me something that, you know, I, I needed to learn from the universe. But mm. honestly, I never loved school. Yeah. I was always hella smart. Mm -hmm. I was always hella smart. School did not... Um, it didn't interest me, okay. you know, yeah. and I felt yeah. like a know it all then, right? right. I was always hella smart, so it was just like I was unintrigued. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't really put any effort into school. I could have. Man, bro, I didn't put no effort into right. that shit. Right. And it was so easy for me. <laughs> but uh, once I got the peoples, it was like peoples kind of also solidified my um, thought in like for what I want to do. Education isn't a necessity. Okay. Right? It right. was like, it's not a necessity for where I want to be or what I wanted to do. And it kind of showed me that. And I was able to work on my craft even more. Like going to people's, there was literally, nigga didn't have to do shit. Right. Right? Right. Everything was easy. And like shit that was at Bethel easy, it was like at people's it's a hundred times, times easy. easy. You feel yeah. me? So it was just like, all right, I'm going to focus on my craft. I used to write. Just a shit ton of raps in, in class. Put my headphones in and just write. Just consume music. So it really helped me advance a little bit more because I didn't have to deal with the structure of a traditional school and coming mm -hmm. home and trying to keep up with work. Not that I did anyway. Which right. is how I right. ended up right. at Peoples. Right. But it was right. like, it really just broke everything down. I feel like by the time I got to Peoples, I was like, I was done. I was already clocked out. Mm -hmm. It was like, nigga, I'm just doing this I'm so my mama this. be happy. I graduated. Right. right. You feel me? I feel, I feel like that about school in general, um, outside of learning the actual trade, something that you need to know specifics on, being a doctor or, a, you know, an um, archaeologist or something of that sort, right? Something that has a specific skill set. Because I feel as though um, you're training to be in the workforce, basically, right? And, and most things they teach you in school are... To me, school is let's see who can stick to task. Mm -hmm. Let's see who has ADHD or whatever we diagnose that as, right? Let's see who, let's separate these people now and start putting, let's label them. Right. So he'll, he'll, he'll be our factory workers. He'll be, he'll be the, you know, like it's just. It's our just, equal opportunity employment. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like, like, and, 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 and something that I find interesting, interesting, you took a path that many took out of high school, right? Big Brown. You, you end up at UPS. That's hilarious, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Is that a term they say? I didn't work there, but I hear people no, say No, that's hella funny. But <laughs> uh, that's like a, um, and I wonder what that is. Because UPS for the hood is like the army. Right. Like that's like almost a rite of passage coming out of high school. You go in and you, and I wonder how they kind of set that up. Like they, they set up these the four hour shifts so you don't need to get benefits. It ain't too tedious. And they, right. But they, right. you feel me? They mm -hmm. can get you in flow without having to do all the extra. Yeah. But I heard you say in an interview that even in a, a job setting, you was always. Mm -hmm high energy and ready to get it done and Bro, you know excelling i changed the the culture at every job i did the energy was shifted every job i went to every driver that way it's funny i did a show at empress uh last year for my birthday one of my old drivers that i was a helper with okay pulled up he's like yo i knew you was gonna make it like wow. everywhere since then like i'm i'm the nigga who nigga we gotta drop off packages while you driving i'm finna go in the back and sort these bitches in, in numerical order so we could just run to it right nigga, I, when we get out of the truck i'm finna hop out i'm finna run throw them bitches get back i'm gonna talk to people like it was it was always that same energy i'm gonna figure out a way to do do this shit ten times better. Put an eight in a one and do magic. Trying to stretch hair on like elastic. Eco friendly drug dealer. I don't waste no plastic. Use all four corners of that baggie.
Uh, all I ever wanted was a bankroll. So I pull up on chat before the bank close. Say no to stank hoes and stank clothes. No paramedic pimping, nigga, we don't save hoes. Yeah, rest in peace and love.